Jack them up, boys. How many of you have, and I'm going to ask this in a way so that I, nobody has to feel uncomfortable about exposing their self. How many of you have, one, been under attack, two, and or need direction? Anybody? I want to talk to you tonight about those things. Because sometimes we don't tap in, and I call this tonight ex ignoring one of the greatest spiritual tools. Um, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. I'm going to do something. I'm going to read it out of a translation I don't normally read out of. So uh, you might find the NIV up there. <clears throat> Just for this one verse. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. And always keep praying for all the Lord's people. The New King James says, making intercession for the saints. So, there's some things that when we need direction, besides when to put a band-aid on and when not to, I'd like to tell you Kathleen ran a drill through my finger this afternoon, but it was me, so I can't do that. <clears throat> um, I figured out, I got to quit working on the house. <laughs> anyway, um, sometimes we're looking for direction and we've not tapped into that place where we've spent the time with the Lord about that direction. Or we might not be looking for direction. I'm going to tell you something that uh, happened to me last night. I'm not going to tell you the situation. It's actually a ministry that I'm, I'm going to do later this year. And uh, I'm going to tell you, in a mid, and I'd been asleep about three hours, and I come wide awake in a panic. And I don't wake up in a panic about anything. And, and when I woke up, that thing was on my mind. And I knew what I needed to do was spend time before the Lord about that particular thing so that I could get his mind on it. And I finally decided that was about, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock last night because uh, I still don't have my body clock turned completely around, so I'd gone to bed pretty early, <laughs> like way before dark, <laughs> which is highly unusual for me. And finally, at 5 o'clock this morning, I went back to bed for a couple hours. Now Roddy knows why I was 10 minutes late to Starbucks this morning. Uh, because there's everything I could do to beat myself out of bed when it was time to get up. Because I'd spent most of the night with the Lord. Do you know that I didn't have the answer yet? But I had a peace. And the reason that I'd had a peace is because when I got before the Lord... I don't even know what I'm praying for. So I begin to pray in the Spirit. And that's what I want to look at tonight. The greatest spiritual tool, and, and this is something we talk about quite often in this church, as well as when it comes corporate prayer night, we pray in the Spirit, which this, this month is in July is going to be the third Wednesday night. Um, we're uh, making some adjustments since uh, 
Gloria's boss went home to be with the Lord. Uh, she has uh, loaded up responsibilities, and so she's asked to change the night of corporate prayer, and it'll be the third Wednesday night in July. But, uh, which doesn't mean that we should wait until corporate prayer to pray in a spirit, or Sunday morning in prayer time to pray in a spirit, or... And, and we don't have prayer on Wednesday night. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it, that kitchen's always open for prayer time. Um, I'd, I don't attend simply because I don't. Most of the time I find out what's prayed out in there is what, I, what I'm about to preach. And, and uh, a couple of things. I don't want to be distracted. And I enjoy the the prayer that goes up because the Holy Spirit just starts dealing with me about stuff and that's why it's the same. But there's a lot of confusion about that, about praying in the Spirit. It's not the gift of tongues, but it's the evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so we realize that it's something that, and that's what I want to look at tonight is, is it's impossible to gain the wisdom of God without seeking Him through His Spirit. And we need to have the wisdom of God on everything that we do. We need to have the wisdom of God when we're under attack at how to proceed. We need to have the wisdom of God. You know, I, I'll never forget, I went to a Jim Hockaday who used to be used to do healing school after Keith Moore was gone. Uh, Jim Hockaday did prayer and healing school at Rama Bible School. And so when we were up there and we attend, uh, one time I went to a class uh, that Jim Hockaday was, was teaching during a minister's conference. He said, how many of you came in here today seeking direction for your ministry? And I'm, I'm just going to tell you that probably 99% of our hands went up. Because we were in there praying. It was called praying for your ministry. He goes, okay, I'm going to ask a quick question. How many of you prayed in the Spirit in the beginning to get a direction for your ministry? That same 99% of the hands went up. He goes, okay, I'm going to make this class real short. Why would you quit? Because if you hadn't quit, you wouldn't be here now. And I went, I could leave. Because I realized what I was seeking, if I just had the mind and the wisdom of God on that thing, I would know what to do. Turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Not Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians. I said that for my benefit because I turned to Chronicles first. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse three. But I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve, by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel to which you accepted, you may well put up with it. What does that have to do with praying in the Spirit? Sometimes... When we are seeking God or we're wanting to have direction, we don't spend the time with God. And what Paul's talking about in this place is we could actually be deceived because we're not spending the time with God that we should. And that's the thing Paul is, is talking to uh, the Corinthians about in this chapter, knowing that really... The, being in Christ and the gospel of Christ is simple. That's what he says, the simplicity of Christ. 
God's plan for us is so simple that sometimes we make it hard. When, if we'll just spend time saying, Father, I want your mind. James says, he who lacks wisdom, ask and God, uh, ask God, and he gives liberally and without reproach. In other words, he gives us more wisdom than we need, and he doesn't hold it against us. And he'll just keep giving us that wisdom. And sometimes we go, well, uh, man, I ask a lot. By whose standard? And that's the thing that we have to get in our mind, is that God has all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the power, and he's ready to give it to us. And he's simply waiting for us to say, Father, I want to be involved in your plan. Father, I want your mind on this because I don't want to go around the mountain again. I want your mind in this because I want to succeed. Do you know that it is his plan that you succeed in everything that you do? It is his plan that you never fail. So when we have a failure in life, I believe that we haven't sought God hard enough so that we don't have a failure. He is not the God, the author of failure. He is the author of of completeness. He is the author of everything that's good. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation and there is no turning aside. In other words, there's nothing else he knows how to do but give good gifts and direct us in a good direction so that we succeed at everything that we do. And that's what Paul's, when Paul says the simplicity of Christ, I don't want you to be deceived as easily as, as Eve was. Eve only had the wisdom that Adam gave her because she came from Adam. We don't know how long actually uh, Eve had been. It, all of that, the, all of those chapters look like it was from day to day to day to day to day to day. We have no idea how, actually how long that they had been there. Even though Eve walked in the garden in the cool of the evening with, her, with Adam and God, Eve was under Adam's authority. And so God had told Adam what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And she was deceived because it, I know that it, because she walked with the Father, that she had the opportunity to gain that same wisdom and that same knowledge from the Father that Adam did. By the way, I know that Adam sinned and Adam ate of the tree also. But it, it, it tells us in Genesis and Paul tells us here that, that Eve was deceived. Not Adam. Adam. Adam committed high treason. Adam sinned. Adam did what God told him not to do. But Eve was deceived. God does not want us to be deceived. So Paul's not talk, picking on women here. Instead, he's telling us, I don't want you to be deceived. He wasn't talking to women in this place. He was talking to each and every one of us that are believers. Does not want us to be deceived. Uh, to avoid this, we've got to have the greatest spiritual tool in operation in our life. As a church, we have to do it. As an individual, we have to do it. As a, a, a family member, men, you should be praying uh, over your family all the time, not just your wife praying over the family all the time. Your wife should be praying over the family all the time because it, the Proverbs directs the kids to listen to their mother. So we know that the mothers should be praying over the family just like the men do. But men, it is not your responsibility to lay back and let your wife do all the praying. We are to pray in the Spirit, each and every one of us. If you go on to what Paul said here uh, to the Corinthians, he, what he said was he said that he, God doesn't see man, woman, slave, or free in Christ. He sees his seed. 
So we know in Isaiah even in the 51st chapter, the 10th verse, it tells us that when we pray that he sees his seed. So every one of us is on an equal level when we pray in the spirit over our families and over each and every direction that we uh, personally need. Um, what the Lord woke me up over last night didn't affect Kathleen. It affected something in ministry that, that I was head, heading to do. And, uh, and it actually was the end of the day today before I got the mind of God on it. But I never quit praying in the Spirit. Even to the point that uh, I realized when I went back to bed this morning, I, didn't, uh, I, I knew that I didn't have the mind of God on it, but I had a peace because I'd already been praying in the Spirit for several hours. I went back to bed. I realized I didn't, uh, didn't rest very well because I continued to pray in the Spirit to get the mind of God. Um, and that, and, and what, we, what we realize, in, uh, and what I realized is he was trying to instruct me all the time. And uh, whether I had closed off ears or I just, just kept looking for another answer, I, I can't tell you. But once I got that answer, there was a total peace with the direction that I was going. Uh, turn to uh, Jude 120. There's only one chapter in Jude, but it's the 20th verse. The great thing about praying the will of God in this, and knowing that when we pray in the Spirit... We've got to be praying in the will of God because it's God's Spirit that prays through us, in us. We're not just praying and, and, and it's a bunch of, of gibberish, but it's literally the, the language that God has given us to pray to search, because the Spirit searches the deep things of God. Jude 20 says that we build ourselves up, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. The purpose for praying in the Spirit is to pray the will of God, to strengthen yourself in the will of God, and the knowledge of His will. You know, what is his will on that thing that you're seeking? I, I, I ask you to raise your hands whether you were under attack or you were looking for direction because one of the things that, and this is the thing that God began to deal with me about this afternoon. He says, you're not the only one looking for direction right now. And so this is the reason that, that I went this way with tonight because we've got to pray in a spirit. I can promise you that... Praying in the Spirit for direction for the church, for things that we're doing, is something that I do constantly because I want to know what God's plan is. I want to know how God wants to direct us, how God wants us to do things, how He wants to proceed. And, and as we do that, you know, I'd been praying over uh, uh, actually a, a horse I wanted to sell. And I was asked a question by a guy that, that wanted to buy it. When he, gave, when he asked the question, I didn't have to think about it because I'd already been praying in the Spirit to get the mind of God on this thing. And so when, he, when the question was asked, a complete peace came over, and I just said yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and knowing that that's what... God's plan was because when we pray in the spirit it relieves stress it relieves stress over a situation it relieves stress over things that are going on whether it's an attack or whether it's direction and as as stress builds up sometimes anxiety comes in because we've let stress build up at that place some people refer to praying in the spirit as their prayer language Paul said that we don't know how, how to pray, but the Spirit intercedes for us. Turn to Romans chapter 8. And, and these, these uh, two verses are not uh, 
unfamiliar to us, but they're very familiar to us, which sometimes we need to go back and look at familiar things because we get so familiar we, we forget some things about them. Romans 8, 26 says, And likewise the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 27th verse says, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercessions for the saints according to what? The will of God. If we want to know what the will of God is, we realize that when we pray in the Spirit, we're praying in the will of God. Because we're praying out the will of God. We're praying in the will of God. We're no, never praying for something, well, we don't know what we're praying for. We're praying for what God's plan is. And it's always God's will because the Spirit can't do anything but pray the will of God. And so we're, we're not tr just trying to find the will of God, but we're, we're literally praying the will of God out. The solution to the problem may be a mystery to you, but there's no mysteries to God. Even though you may not know what you're praying for in the consciousness, the Spirit does and He prays the will of God through, uh, through you from your spirit. God hears this prayer and acts to fulfill it. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You know, I tried to, I, I was trying to pick out a verse in here is actually what I was doing. And as, as I read through this chapter, I realized this whole chapter really is about praying out the will of God in, in how we do it. And sometimes we get into, and, and to give us a, a background on the Corinthians, they were... Uh, very spiritual people, but they were in, in the demonic world before they got saved. And when they were in the demonic spirit world, they were very sensitive to spirit things. And so, so many times, and this reason they had to have a lot of instruction about this is, I've heard, I've heard this preached, I've heard people say, well, they were carnal people. No, they were very sensitive to the spirit. And so, and, and the reason that Paul dealt with the fact that they could be deceived is because he wanted to make sure that they stayed on track with the, the Spirit of God and didn't try to mix what they already knew with the, the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, that's why he dealt with them so uh, distinctly on so many things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And I, brethren... When I came to you, did not come in excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. There is no way for us to be in demonstration of the Spirit and power if we don't spend time praying the Spirit and letting the power begin to completely envelop us, to fill us, so that we can, we can talk about uh, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, and all those things. But if we don't pray in the Spirit, we're not prepared for it when we get there. And we have to be people that are prepared for it when we get to that place. So as we pray in the Spirit, by the way, you don't have to close your eyes to pray in the Spirit. You can pray in the Spirit, be in the middle of doing something else, because it tells us that when our, when we're, our spirit prays, our mind's unfruitful. So when our spirit prays, we could be literally doing something else. I'm going to tell you one time I walked up to a, a, a team roping. 
I got there, I had actually driven 1,700 miles to get to this team roping to do Bible studies. And when I got there, I was walking around hanging to hang posters for a Bible study I was going to have at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and there was posters hanging all over the place for somebody else. And when I was standing talking to these two guys that were going to do Bible study, um, all the time I'm looking at them, we're having a conversation, I'm praying in the Spirit because I want to hear what the mind of God is. Because I know what the flesh said. Hope you all enjoy the Bible study I'm going to do this afternoon because you're not doing it. But I kept praying in the Spirit. I kept praying in the Spirit. And, and the Holy Spirit told me, he says, bless them and tell them to do it. And so I did. Now remember, I drove 1,700 miles to get to this roping. I was planning on doing it. I was going to do it. This is what the Holy Spirit says. He says, it, Kathleen had sent uh, all kinds of, of uh, snacks in the motor home. and I mean, it was all prepared. The Lord told me, he says, you put out everything for it. You tell them you'll host it, and they're going to do it. So that's what we did. I, I'm going to tell you, we had great results that day. Not only did we have great results that day, and I was so glad that even though while we were having a conversation, that I just prayed in the Spirit till I got the mind to God, and I knew what my answer was. Because my flesh didn't, I'm already told you, my flesh didn't feel that way. And so as we did that, well, this is what happened about a month and a half later. Kathleen and I get to Denver, Colorado, and I pull in. Guess whose trailer's parked next to us when we pull in? I think, no way. This is not happening again. I get in there, and uh, this is before this church, before this church started. Um, and uh, when I got there, now my flesh rose up. I said, Lord, I don't even want to ask you, but I'm going to. I'm going to pray in the Spirit. And I prayed in the Spirit. I get in that morning. Uh, we, we'd pulled in about 4 o'clock in the morning. I got in there at, at 7 o'clock uh, as the roping was starting, uh, about ready to put up posters. Guess what happens? The two guys that that had happened with a month and a half before came up to me, and they said, hey, we realized that we were wrong. You were supposed to do that. And I said, no, you need to realize that I prayed in the Spirit. And he said, you were supposed to do it. But, I pray, but, but what happened was that basically they apologized. Well, to this day, um, if I told you who it was, you'd know, and so I'm not going to. But we're great friends. We do a lot of stuff together now. Um, in fact, we're both heads over of another ministry together. And it came to a place that none of that would have happened had I not prayed in the Spirit. And what would have happened was I might not have had a great friend that is also uh, uh, help in ministry where we help one another. We might not have been friends at all because I wouldn't have prayed in the Spirit and got the mind of God and let my flesh rule. Don't ever let your flesh rule. But allow the Holy Spirit to come up and, and uh, deal with you. Boy, I didn't, I, none of that came to my mind whenever I was studying today. Go, uh, verse 5, that your faith, okay, it, it for ended, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. If we want a faith, that, people's faith to be in the power of God, we've got to be prepared in the Spirit that will be in demonstration of that power in every place that we go. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak of the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Wait a minute. For whose glory? Why? 
Why our glory? Because we make him look good. We become the fragrance of God. We, when our glory is in the fact that we walk in the spiritual wisdom of the Father. That we're in demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of those things come into a fullness when we're able to uh, do that. By the way, I have to tell you, the other thing that happened that weekend, we'd never had a, an offering over, you know, a couple of hundred dollars at one of those ropings like that. And uh, which every time what it helped us do, it helped us get to the next one. And that Sunday, because I saw, and I believe with all my heart, it was because I sought God. The offering, I remember, I'll never forget. The offering was $1,758 that Sunday. Not only could we get to the next one, but we could pay our bills for the next month. Because God had, I just, I, and I know that it was praying in the Spirit, getting the mind of God and doing things the way that God told me to. I'd always wanted a uh, particular cowboy hat and they called me to the arena, and the promoter gave me one that, that Sunday. And I really believe that all of that had to do with uh, uh, the wisdom of the, the praying in the Spirit and doing everything the way the Spirit told us to do that. I'm going to tell you, God will get the greatest provision to you. He'll give you His wisdom and do everything that He says He'll do if you'll seek His mind and you'll get the things that, that God gave, that God told you. But it is written, verse 9, But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. If we want to hear, see, hear the deep things of God, if we want to learn the deep things of God, we've got to pray in the Spirit. Let the Spirit instruct us. Begin. Let the Spirit who searches the deep things of God be the one who reveals to us through His Spirit the things that we don't even know how to pray out. For what man knows, verse 11, what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we've not received, not, we've, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things which have freely been given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can we know them because they're spiritually discerned. If you want to discern things spiritually, we've got to tap into the Spirit that the Spirit will, will teach us what, what's, what's what, how spiritually things are discerned, whether it's God's Spirit, whether it's the, the, a demonic spirit, or, or it's man's spirit. Sometimes it's just somebody's flesh has nothing to do with the devil or, or, or God. It just has to do with their acting out in the flesh. But the natural man does... Uh, no, verse 15. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. If we want to have the mind of Christ, we've got to pray in the Spirit that searches the things of Christ, that th searches the things of God, that we'll have the mind of Christ when we're praying. Some may ask, then why should I pray in the Spirit all the time? If I'm praying in God's will and I'm praying in the Spirit, some may ask, then why shouldn't I pray in, in the Spirit all the time? 
If I'm praying in God's will and praying in the Spirit, praying correctly, the answer is quite simple. Praying in the Spirit cannot be used as a crutch or excuse for not knowing the Word of God. We've got to know the Word of God too. We've got to know what the Word says. Sometimes we're trying to pray out things that we're just too lazy to look up. So we can't let it be the thing that becomes a crutch to us. It shouldn't be a crutch. It should be something that empowers us. Something that causes us to, in other words, we can't be lazy. We've got to study the Word, pray in a spirit, let the Spirit guide us in all things. If we're not understanding what we're reading in the Word, it's because we're not spending time with the Spirit that wrote the Word. Because God will reveal it to us. God will reveal what it means to us in our own life. Paul says this, For I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the confusion, conclusion then? I will pray in the Spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 and 15. Praying in the Spirit allows the Holy Spirit to intercede for you. Praying in the understanding is praying out the abundance of your own heart. We need to pray in the Spirit. We need to pray in the understanding. I am not telling you that the only thing I do is pray in the Spirit, but I'm going to tell you when I don't know the direction to go because I'm looking from a man's standpoint or from the spirit of a man, then I've got to pray in the Spirit because I want to look at it from the Spirit of God. I want to look at it from the wisdom of God. I want to look at it as my Father sees it. So as, a, as my Father sees it, then I know that I'm... I'm getting his will and I'm, I'm hearing what he has to say on that thing. And, and this is not a new message. Um, it's something that we look at from time to time. And we're going to continue to look at it because we can't get lazy and not pray in the Spirit. I believe this. I believe that there's things that God wants to do in our families, in our church, in the ministries that we're part of here in the, in the, the church, in, in every place. that Because on Wednesday night, I'm, I'm talking to leaders of different positions in the, in the body most of the time. And so what we have to do is we have to pray in the Spirit. Because it may, it may not look like really in the flesh that we either want to do it or we think we've got the way to do it. I don't want to just do something because I've been doing it. I want to do it because the Lord instructs me to do it. And so, as the Lord instructs me to do it, then I see what He wants to do and how He wants to do it. That I can fulfill what God wants us to do. I want to see this church fulfill the plan of God. I want to see each one of us fulfill the position that God has got us in to be able to do the things and, and, not, and to, to run the race and not get weary. You know, because I'm not going to kid anybody. Everybody's busy. Everybody's got things going on. When we've got things going on, uh, um, whatever that thing might be, and we get busy, pretty soon we get tired and, and, and we don't, and we've got to let the Spirit empower us to have that, that uh, strength and energy to go on. And because in God's plan, we realize that day to day, it's getting short. We can look at what happened in Istanbul yesterday and realize that a lot of things that prophecy talks about, we can, we can call it whatever it is. You know, I'm not going to discount terrorism. It is terrorism. But the, but the Bible talks about those things getting more and more often in, in, the, in the end times. And I know that the time is short. And we have a short window to be able to fulfill the, the kingdom of God right here on this earth. And I know that it's our Father's will that none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. If it's His will for that, then I want to know what my part is. I want to know how my part fulfills that place. And knowing that God has a, a great plan. Father, I thank you that you give us your wisdom in your mind. 
as we pray, pray in the understanding, pray in the in the spirit. Father, be with us and guide us as we go from this place. Father, give us not only your wisdom at what we're going to do, but Father, those that raise their hand and we're looking for direction tonight, Father, that you'll give them direction through your spirit. Father, those that uh, even watching by internet that might have thought, I'm looking for direction. Father, give them direction through your spirit. Those that are under attack, Father, that you'll show them how to get out of that attack by, by, by your spirit, through your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus and by his blood, we give you glory and honor and power. Amen. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your Savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and he is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching. And so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation... Uh, the buck outs and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo. And uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says, whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. So we want you to know that God loves you, He'll take care of you, and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you, and so do we.